Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Why, hello there. So, guys, this is just some random thoughts coming together. Just want to share it with uh, the family, so to speak, and get your feedback. Um, I, I really feel that this event that we watched happen in uh, North Carolina, Tennessee, you know, again, uh, the whole Helene nightmare is a little different and yet you know we've seen uh different aspects of this at different times with different quote-unquote natural disasters and uh you know you could quadruple quote those if you want <laughs> as many people are are waking up to what's been going on uh with the planet for a long time so this is you know a view from helicopter showing a lot of mud and yes there was a big flood and they are making notes that you know it was it's so much worse than what most people uh can't imagine or even think as they go along on this this ride it's it's just buried uh there was a story of one gentleman that they found and he was buried up to his shoulders in mud and they went to rescue him and he, and he asked that they not because uh, his family was underneath him, literally underneath him. And, uh, you know, for a while they were able to touch his feet and let him know they were still okay. Uh, and then they stopped touching his feet. And when the rescuers found him, it was several days later. So he just didn't want to be saved. This is very, very sad. But a lot of people are starting to really wonder, are we to equate North Carolina with mud floods? buried previous civilizations on the planet are they showing us how it's done have we seen only the tip of the iceberg oh yeah this is again uh spruce pines north carolina hit with a huge wall of water and mud for almost uh, a week you know it's it's weeks later and you know still there's they're just scratching the surface and we'll never know we will never know the numbers uh, that are affected by this. You know, it hits me um, a little bit deeper just because, you know, <laughs> when Cindy and I were to first together, this is where I was. And our friend said, hey, your old place, it's, it's washed away there. You know, I didn't own it, but um, I rented a beautiful place, loved it. You know, loved the area, loved the people. I mean, as far as feeling safe in a community the mountains of north carolina makes you feel really really safe um, by the way this was a uh, patreon exclusive that we did talking about <sighs> different things going on and you know again a little bit plainer on patreon uh, we do see there's a lot of uh, new people subscribing to the patreon page uh, as we have i think 865 um total family members over at patreon and 460 something uh that are are paying uh to get the exclusive material but you can also subscribe over there just to see what is coming and you know again we could look to the past this is a movie from 1944 meet me in st louis truth is always hidden in plain sight what's this movie about well it's about the 1904 st louis world's fair and when this little girl comes and she's all excited because the world's fair i do remember um hearing my aunts and and my mom and everybody talking about these events that happened they were still fresh in their memories um you know even in this in the 70s and and late 60s they were fr still things people were really buzzing about because they were so grand and so um so unusual and really spectacular uh yes I, I mean very very beautiful and the architecture the beauty the layout the you know the culture i i think using uh these for world fairs and 
uh, some of the things that they use to seed our culture with was really interesting. You know, how are they gonna how are they gonna use these beautiful buildings and these backdrops to <laughs> teach humans what life is about? And, and that's what it was. It was about getting people together and uh, telling them the things that they're going to eat, the cool things to do, um, how humans should dress and how they should behave. And, you know, that's what uh, these world fairs were all about. But the architecture, I mean, there is magic upon this architecture. And I could only imagine just being in the presence of this architecture has really got to make you feel very good. I mean, just look at it. Look at the, you know, <laughs> depicting the giants. Now, they say this is all made from material that's uh, temporary and then it all gets bulldozed over. And yet there are some buildings that still stand, you know, but they say, oh, it was just all a temporary creation. Hmm, temporary. Yeah. You know, and you look at people. The, the, the top hats do you know the story behind a lot of these top hats these there was a reason why people that were wearing these top hats sometimes got called mad hatters and it's because of what they put into the the hat material that literally did seep into people's <laughs> brains and into their body and did tr make them mad that that's a whole video unto itself but again there's there's so much that's fascinating the deeper you look into these things you know these exhibits incredible an elephant made from almonds kid you not spectacular it feels like you're in i don't know rome at its heyday it's just incredible and you know yet they have the the native americans here depicted as Again, uh, noble savages say, yeah, sure. You know, again, who's who's really the savages in all this? They had a lot of exhibits, too, um, of people from around the world and the different tribes of the world, all these different domes. And uh, just incredible, really, that they put all this together. And then, you know, again, telling us our history, the, there, this is how so many people learned of our history, really. And a lot of kids were wide-eyed and, you know, just amazed. A lot of adults were as well. But is our history really our history? That's the bottom line. You know, th this is uh, inspired by um, John Levy and my lunch break and uh, Lucius as well as others that you know have channels that this is all they ever do all they ever do is is just dig 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 into this that married couple they just don't look happy there wow no you know and so much of it looks like people that are going to go back to jail in some yes, cases definitely. i mean they look like they're going back to jail they're maybe these were the original 15 minute cities maybe they made them pretty and but people couldn't leave hmm curious well, yeah, there's there's a lot to it. I mean, look at this. Look at this. Uh oh, uh oh, a little illusion, a little little NASA moon landing there. Yeah, sure, sure. Oh, Temple of Mirth. Oh gosh. Hmm. Fascinating stuff, guys. But back to the movie, as I am digressing. Uh, what? I wanted to share, and you know, we would get a copyright strike if I played it, but I'm going to go slow. Truth is always hidden in plain sight. This little girl says, e eating that, well, no, one of the adults is saying, eating that sponge sugar, you will spoil your dinner. And then she goes to tell a story out of the blue here. Big waves came up and flooded the whole city. When the water went back, it was all muddy and horrible, full of dead bodies. Huh, where the heck did that come from, kid? Who's telling you? Who's telling you this? And then, you know, they light up the exhibit. Because, again, this is a movie in 1944. Uh, looking back at 1904, so 40 years previous. And, you know, saying, Grandpa, they'll never tear it down, will they? They better not. 
Yes, they did tear it down. They tear it. All, they tore it all down. And was the little girl really sharing what really happened to you know the the grand old cities that we see depicted here? Was it exactly what happened in <laughs> in the mountains of North Carolina and Tennessee? Yeah, meet me in St. Louis. It's a Christmas musical. I think, again, in so many ways, the World's Fair was kind of a ritual. Uh, it was just like what they do uh, and did over in front of the Gothard Tunnel when they're opening that up over by CERN. They do a lot of rituals. They do a lot of hand signals. And these are some photos from, you know, again, that 1904, the actual World's Fair there. Are they showing us uh, what happened to Tataria? Are they showing us what happened to Atlantis? Are they showing us what happened to the Cathars, as we were talking about uh, in this video, which um, <laughs> the, the whole point of this video is really just to show that nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. Anybody that tries to break away from the control structure faces the same sort of scenario. And it could be, again, through fire or by water, but it's the same scenario. You know, it's, it's interesting. There's still some remnants that you can see. There you go. There's an interesting statue of a young man with a loot. Utah Pavilion. Another statue, Baron Friedrich Wilhelm von Steuben. The St. Louis Arts Museum. That was built for the World's Fair, but they didn't tear that down. And then I don't know what that's doing. Somebody's feeding uh, a deer a cucumber. Uh, that's at least what I'm choosing to think of it. And the Nevada Pavilion. Unearth sculptures. Mmm, there's so much right, right underneath our feet, guys. Right underneath our feet. 1904 General Store, it's still sitting there again. Another one constructed for the World's Fair. Curious. And how the 1904 World's Fair showcased new American foods, as, you know, Tartaria not around anymore. So many of these other civilizations not around anymore. So they got to create the culture. And this is like saying, this is who you are. This is programming to say who you are. Well, how about all those orphan trains that were coming maybe, you know, at that time and also about 20, 20, 30 years earlier and even farther back. Uh, all these orphans from what? From a flood? From war? From pestilence? Disease? Why all the Cabbage Patch Kids? Why why the concept of kids being born without a normal mom and dad there? Just kids being born and there's nobody there. Where'd they come from? Test tubes? Are they genetic creations? Are they uh, the next modified version of humanity to be placed into a world where the past occupants were erased? And then telling them what they're to eat. And this is your culture. And yes, you like hot dogs and ice cream and apple pie. That's the culture. That's the culture. Your culture. Cotton candy. Yeah, foods that built America. Interesting when you look at the foods. Uh, now, this lady has, has some things that she wants to go over. And, you know, I think this is great. I mean, educating people right there in the supermarket. I mean, it doesn't get any better than this. Raise hand if you're a pickle person. Sorry, I'm gonna burst your bubble if you love these ones. Uh, cucumbers, water, vinegar, salt, garlic, spices, calcium chloride, firming agent. One out of 10 of 1% sodium benzenate preservative, natural colors, EDTA, color retainer, and turmeric. Sodium benzenate, was that one in here? Yep. Allergic reactions, and it's a known carcinogen. Can anybody tell me what that means, known carcinogen? Cancer causing. We got fresh cucumbers, water, salt, distilled vinegar. Contains less than 2% of dried garlic, calcium chloride, sodium benzenate, spice, mustard seed, natural flavor, 
dried raw pepper, polysorbate 80, and a different name of turmeric that I've never seen before. So I don't know what that is. Polysorbate 80, immunosuppressant. Infertility. Fun fact about polysorbate 80, it is also in shots because it opens the blood-brain barrier. The polysorbate 80 is known to open your blood-brain barrier. What does that mean? Your brain is protected by a thin lining. The brain blood-brain barrier, polysorbate 80, opens that pathway to allow chemicals, metals, preservatives to then go into your brain. So, you know, there you go. The bigger picture. It's all being revealed. Oh, it could be very, very scary. It can be so scary. I mean, really, if you slow down and uh, do what this gal did and read through and really understand what you're putting in your body, I think uh, people would view life differently. The problem is, is there's so many calcified pineal glands. It's like people know and people hear, but they think, ah, oh, you know, I'll, I'll just finish. I'll just drink it. You know, I have this candy bar here. I might as well eat it. I don't want to throw it away. But if, if you really slow down and if you absorb what these foods are doing to you, then I, I think we would start to make changes. I think it's really interesting in those cultures where, you know, the top hats, if they had that stuff in them, they're making them so, so popular. So, you know, looking at the top hats and looking at popularity, that's why I'm so leery of anyone who gets like a gazillion views anyone who is pushing a certain thing, anyone who somehow, some way gets really super popular, that's a concern because it's not the first time this has happened where they've put things out in the public that are going to harm people. The other thing I noticed about those people in the old pictures is their auras were stronger. Their auras were stronger. So making it very, very necessary to make those hats that they made to stop them from using any kind of influence or abilities but it doesn't take uh, I mean it takes it takes a little bit of time you have to wear that hat a little bit more to have the energy actually seep into your body but it seeps into your body and let's say they have children and actually the children will be affected from that so again making it really important for parents to heal their bodies because your children are going to pick up uh, anything that is not healed from you to a certain extent. So healing heals forwards and backwards, up and down, side to side. Healing healing helps heal everyone around you. So it's just we should make that the priority. Absolutely. As always, guys, thanks for your support as we are trying every day to awaken the planet as much as we possibly can. And I know you guys are doing what you can too. Keep pushing. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.